Final bowl game on the 26th. We have the Guaranteed Rate Bowl. It should be a re- really fun one. Uh, if you like offensive football, this is your game here. UNLV takes on Kansas. The Jayhawks are 12 and a half point favorites, so maybe not the closest contested game, at least the expectations, but this does carry a nice over-under of 64 and a half points. It kicks off at 9 p.m. Eastern on ESPN from Chase Field in Phoenix. Kansas, this is the first back-to-back bowl appearance for them since 2007-2008. Uh, last year, of course, the Jayhawks lost that wild back-and-forth overtime game against Arkansas. They're probably looking to to correct that, course correct. UNLV, they're playing their first bowl game since 2013. Now, it looks like this is going to be a Jason Bean game. Uh, Jalen Daniels will return next season. Jason Bean won't, so that tells me he's going to get the start. They're not going to force Daniels in here, even though bowl games don't count toward red shirts. Uh, their offensive coordinator, though, was hired away by Penn State. To me, the system's in place, so I, I don't think that changes really much of anything there. Uh, Lance Leipold is kind of the guy that calls shots anyway when it comes to you know going for it on fourth down and, and those kind of things. So I really don't think the offense is going to be hindered by that. Um, however, their starting left tackle opted out. Uh, freshman is going to be starting in his place there. And Kansas was already down two other offensive line starters in uh, Week 13, so watch for their status. Down three starters on the offensive line isn't great. UNLV, pretty decent sack rush. They're a top 40 sack rush according to PFF, and they have a 6.6% sack rate, which is about middle of the road, but they're not inept, so let's put it that way. The Rebels, though, they were down a pair of starting safeties in the Mountain West Championship game. That did cost them uh, quite a bit. I, I think that that is uh, pretty important, so I keep an eye on the status of those guys. But that game, they also had issues defending the run, and my biggest issue is Kansas is uh, seventh in the country in rush EPA, so... Pff, they gave up, uh, I think, uh, 240 combined yards between uh, uh, Boise State quarterback Taylor Green and uh, Ashton Gentry. But Kansas, very good rushing team. They're very creative. They get their guys in space. And if you have issues defending the run, that's going to be a problem. If you're looking, if you have college props available to you, I know not every state does, but I'm probably taking overs on whatever rushing yards I can get my hand on. <laughs> be it running backs, quarterbacks, you name it. Uh, I'm, I'm probably taking overs on those. But with a number as big as this and, and a total as high as this, high totals, high variance, uh, I'm really staying away from the full game spread here. However, you can take Kansas at minus seven first half. I, I think that's the way that I'm going to lean here. Uh, you know, It's available at multiple shops at time of recording here. Come out fast, run the football. It's an indoor environment, assuming that they close the roof, unlike they did in 2021. They had that brief torrential downpour in the desert. Uh, you know, Taking the first half, it avoids the backdoor potential with UNLV's very competent, potent offense. They kept their coaching staff intact, which is a really big deal there. They still Brennan Marion as the offensive coordinator. So I think they'll have a good game plan. Uh, and again, 12 and a half points with the Kansas defense. That's okay. It's better than last year, but it's not great. Uh, that's something that I'd like to avoid any sort of backdoor late bad beat type stuff. So I'm taking Kansas first half minus seven.